like so hold on there the one thing that me feel like the breast was really here for it still not happen as a matter of fact i'm going to be very honest with you that the thought crossed my mind that so to all them breasts i look not even the pitney i want it though Hey everyone, I'm Dania Beckford. Bold, sometimes brash. And since I'm the CEO of Broadtail Design, I consider myself Broadtail Beautiful. It's time we meet the conversations we have as women open, honest, and authentic as we navigate living our best lives. Join me as I have intimate conversations with women of all sizes, shapes, and confidence levels as we explore being Broadtail. Hi everyone, my name is Dania Beckford and I'm the CEO of Broadtail Designs and this is the first season of my first podcast, Being Broadtail. Now, it's so emotional for me to be doing this because this podcast has been on my vision board since 2018. And I was beating up myself about having two years pass and I don't do it. But then I thought to myself, there's a reason why it hasn't been done. So in 2018, I wanted to find different ways to make women feel confident. So 2015, we started the brand Broadtail Designs. And that came out of the fact that I couldn't find any swimsuits that I thought was hot enough, was sexy enough, that I wanted to be in. So ever since I was in Discover Bay, which is where I come from, and if anybody knows Discover Bay, you know that we have a beautiful beach down there called Puerto Seco Beach. And I would go there every single weekend with either my father or other members of my family. And I love the beach and I love to swim. And I used to see all these girls in their swimsuits, having fun, loving it. And I just couldn't find one that I really wanted, that really had my personality all wrapped up in it. But my mother had one that I really liked. It was a black halter back swimsuit. It was a monokini. And she told me that she have it from in the 70s. But I really loved it. And boy, I'm with a ring out that swimsuit. Then I wear it, I'm wear it, I'm wear it. Loved it so much. Until the swimsuit really couldn't take no more. And so when I was at UI now and I would go home to go to the beach, I decided to sketch my own things, use my mother's seamstress, you know, have her make it for me and thing. And that's how I was rolling for a very long time. Then fast forward to 2015 when I did an operation. So I have been battling with fibroids for a very long time. I mean, it was, it was just so bad whenever my period would come. I would have more blood than Dunge River Falls. Every time it was a fiasco. I remember one time going to work in a full white suit like I'm in a right now, you know, feeling hot on the first day of a new job at USAID. Well, needless to say, by the end of the day, my suit was no longer just white. It was red and white and it wasn't Valentine's at all. So I was going through it with these fibroids and I decided that it was time to take them out because I had 15 of them. And so I did an operation. I did a myomectomy in 2015, September 7, I believe. And I was home for four months because I decided that I wanted to recover properly because having done this surgery that was about to change my life, big up to Dr. Ryan Halsall, the best gynecologist ever, he did the operation for me and it, it really just made me feel so different about my life. I wanted to do different things. I no longer had this heavy period over my head. And so I didn't want to work for a little bit. I wanted to regroup with myself, just center myself, see where I was going with all of this. And so in that four months, I actually really started to take this whole swimsuit thing seriously because what happened in that time period is that when I went back to Discover Bay to heal, um, my mother told me, see what I heal everything, you know? So my best friend, Tanik, who also did the set for this podcast, but we're gonna talk about her a little bit later. She and I went to the beach and I wore one of those swimsuits that I had designed and had a seamstress made for me. And I wanted to feel like myself again, confident and bold and all of that. I'm gonna say, you know, so I'm gonna post a picture in other swimsuits here. Yeah. 
where it's like oh when we did have the fibroids my belly was enlarged into like a six month pregnancy and now with the fibroids out i my belly was not as big so i took the picture in my swimsuit and i posted it on facebook not even instagram at the time they posted it on facebook and a bunch of people were complimenting me on the swimsuit asking me where i got it and i you know i kept saying oh i designed it i remember it was a one strap polka dot monokini and they were like so would you make one for us and i was like oh, would you pay for it and they said yes and that is how brag tail design started so it came out of me wanting to have swimsuits that i felt confident in that i wanted to show out in that i was bold in and taking a photo at a time when I didn't feel as confident right after an operation and it ended up being a business. And I have had a lot of support over the past few years with Broadtail. But because confidence is at the core of our brand, I always wanted to do more to make women feel confident because maybe not everybody will ever buy a swimsuit, you know what I'm saying? Not everybody will wear one of our fabulous resort wear dresses or one of our t-shirt dresses. How could I make women feel as confident as I feel every day? And so I put it on my, my, my vision board that I want to do this podcast thing. And it just did not happen because 2018, I also got pregnant. And the love of my life was born in 2019. His name is Zano Che. And so I didn't get to do a lot of the things that was on the vision board for 2018. So a whole year passed and I'm still not doing it. Boom, put it back on the vision board for 2020. And then the coronavirus decided that they wanted to show up in Jamaica on March 10. We sell swimsuits and cover-ups. We do resort wear. We do carnival costumes. Carnival postpone. Where was I going to get this money? How podcasts are going to drop in? Again, it is on the vision board for 2021. But this time, very different. This time, a little bit more focused. This time, with a little bit more planning. This time, with a whole set of people just rallying around me to get it done and I want to use this platform to empower women but by using the experiences of other women so in this series we're going to be talking to five fabulous women and I have a little plot twist for you towards the end but these women are on different parts of their own confident path so they didn't always feel confident about themselves. There are days when they felt like they didn't want to be in their own skins. But based on the experiences that they went through and how they overcame it, they're now able to talk to me in a most genuine and authentic way to empower other women who may be going through different parts of their own confidence journey. But on a no say, me couldn't. Are telling about podcasts without telling you about how the universe and Jehovah had made it happen for me. So I'm in Harry J recording studio and that's at 10 Herb McKinley Drive in Jamaica, in Kingston, Jamaica. And I don't know if you know about Harry J, but it has such a rich history. This is the place that Bob Marley recorded his first five albums. Some of the songs that we sing today and love, it was all recorded here. I'm a girl who loves rich history. And when you're in this building, if you ever get to come here, you will, when you get into the studio, you will just feel this vibe that you know so it's the right place that you ought to be. And so that's what I feel when I come here. And I feel like that time when I have it from my vision board for duty in 2018 and I've had a time because I never find the right place. I know I'm in the right place. And then my best friend, her name is Tenny Gale. She created this set for me. Like she put everything together. And I was saying to myself, she's always been a creative. We've been friends since we were six years old. So we're friends for 30 years now. And she's always wanted to do things like this. But back in 2018, she never had her business yet. She never opened her business yet. She started her business actually 2020 January. And I was saying that, yes. 
in at 2018, she never have her business. So that needed to happen too, for me to be able to use the talent of my very best friend for 30 years to be sitting in a set design that she has done for me. And then my friends, I have a group of friends in our group of ladies that would call ourselves the core. They have supported me doing this as well, which has given me even more confidence to talk to other women about, you know, how to just rally around having a community of women that help you along the way in your own confidence journey. At the core of it all, I realized that plus size women, we continue to need a voice. Over the years, we have been pushed aside because we didn't look traditionally like what fashion label wanted fashion labels wanted us to look like you know there weren't clothes provided for us we weren't on runways we were thought to believe that because your body is different or not of an average size that you're less than that you're not supposed to feel confident you're not supposed to wear like, like where that's a go and uh, even though in recent times with a lot of campaigns being done in the U.S. primarily and a lot of fashion labels opening up to plus size women because guess what? The research has shown that the plus size woman has expendable cash and so she has found herself in jobs that she can afford to spend money on fashion. This is not my studies. These studies have been done in the US and so she have money to spend on clothes. And so why weren't you marketing to her because she had this cash that she could be spending on things other than the regular amenities of life. And so fashion labels have really not caught on very well to the fact that this is a whole market that they were not tapping into. When you're broad tail or you're full figured, life not really work the same as it is for an average sized woman. So I walk around whenever I get into a room and I keep on saying to persons, do you have equal opportunity chairs here? And sometimes I do it as a joke, but it really isn't because because of my size, I'm bigger than the average woman. My bottom cannot hold in the same chair as an average size woman. So may I go break it down for you. So I don't know about other parts of the world, but in Jamaica, in our sports bar, we really love to use these bistro chairs. You know, they look like a nice little oval cup and they're on a nice little stem and you climb up and you sit on them and the average size woman does it so elegantly and she looks great. Let me tell you something about them chair, you know. Them not make for full figured woman, here yeah? Because first of all, my bottom cannot hold pan a chair. Two side is a hang off. Okay, I'm also 5'4". So climbing up on said chair is not as aesthetically pleasing as an average size woman. And then when we finally get pan the chair, the chair starts sink down and embarrass me because me gone lower than everybody else. We need to have some equal opportunity chairs. Also, when you are in an airplane, me know so flying down to Guan right now, not everywhere, but in an airplane, and I didn't actually realize this until I was pregnant in 2019. So, I, I, I'm able to use the regular seat belt when I'm in an aircraft. But when I was pregnant, I needed to ask for an extension because it would have been too tight around my belly because I was seven months pregnant and traveling. And I realized, so I, I put up my hand and, you know, I asked for the extension and the, the flight attendant came over to me and she was just like, oh, oh you're pregnant, okay. And she brought it to me. I also realized that another lady that was sitting in the aircraft, she wanted an extension as well, but for the seatbelt, but not because she was pregnant. She, you know, she was just full figured and, and the seatbelt was not long enough for her, but she was very afraid. She looked timid to ask for it. And I was watching the scenario play out. And when the flight attendant brought the extension for the seatbelt to her, she wasn't as nice as she was to me when she saw that I was pregnant. You know, she kind of just handed it to her like, Lord, yeah, bad at me. And I said to myself, look at the difference in this scenario. 
why 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 the seatbelt them never just long to begin with and those who don't need a long one just clip it where it stop and we don't have to have this this type of interaction where somebody is going to give you an extension to a seatbelt and in her facial expressions make you feel bad or when i asked for my own i was getting that same stoic look but when she realized that i was pregnant she was like oh i had a reason to have an extension no we should stop these things because the way in which we do these things, in, in, it inherently says to a full-figured woman that you don't belong or where you are is not for you or that you're less than because you would need an extension for your seatbelt. And so that was one of the things that propelled me to say, no, I need to be having conversations with other full-figured women about how they feel about some of these things that other people don't even think about that they're doing when, when they are making their set designs or having their, their parties on where to sit and what to do. And then just generally, something happened to me last night that actually made me feel a little bad about myself because... My son was playing in the kitchen while I was tidying up and he left his tablet on the floor and I didn't realize that the tablet was actually on the floor. And so in my movements up and down in the kitchen, I stepped on the tablet and the screen cracked and the screen turned black. And I said to myself, Jano, the first thought that came to me is, I wonder if I come so heavy, why me crack it? <laughs> like, what happened? You know what I'm saying? So even in my own mind where I feel like I am almost at the top of my confidence level or on the confidence chart, there are still things that happen that will make you feel like, oh, maybe because maybe if I didn't have on the amount of weight that I do, that something negative that happened would not have happened. And so this is why these conversations with women about how we feel having extra weight is important because it because you're a confident person, it, it does not negate the fact that on some days you're not going to feel as confident. And that's OK. That means you're human. You can't have the same level of emotions and feelings every single day. And I really saw it work. Ever since I started to grow breasts, I've always imagined that breasts are supposed to look one way because in all the books that you see puberty things happening or if you were to see it on TV, they were always nice and round like an American apple and up and perky and this is how breasts are, right? Um, my breast never looks like it though. Like, from it pop, it drop. Like, it never... Stiff, it never brown, it never perky. In my opinion, it kind of looks like an eggplant, you know what I'm saying? So I have been battling with the fact that how come my breasts don't look like what I saw on TV? And it has taken me all my life actually to love them and to realize that they do serve a purpose. But then hold on, after I reach to the point where, all right, me all right with the breast them, them serve a purpose because I'm supposed to feed my picnic, right? Have this picnic on May 20, 2019. And all throughout the pregnancy, I was going to the doctor and me excited about the fact that I'm pregnant because my breast supposed to be fuller and maybe with the fullness, then I got get to be perky, right? All this time, I didn't think about the milk was supposed to end up to feed the child. So, the breasts are not growing. And I'm wondering what is going on. This was my moment for the breasts to grow and for it to be big and perky and all these things. Countless times, go to Dr. Halso and say, Dr. Halso, my breast not growing, my breast not growing. And he's like, it's going to grow. Milk is going to go in there. Some people breasts don't overflow and big like that. But milk is going to be in there to feed a child. And breastfeeding is a brain function. When the child comes out of your body, your brain is going to tell your breast. All of this thing. The child comes out via C-section. There is no milk happening out of this hair breast. This breast is not encouraged. Um, my mother asks me if it not feel tough, if me not feel like milk I come down. All these things not happening to me. And I'm just like, so hold on there. The one thing that me feel like the breast was really here for 
it still not happen. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be very honest with you that the thought crossed my mind that so to all them breasts I look not even the pitney not want it though. Because the pitney never wanted it because there was no milk in it. So I had to be giving him formula. So that was also a time for me when after I thought that I've, I overcame this whole thought that, oh, my breasts are not ugly. You know, they're, they're here for a purpose. They're going to feed my child. When it never feed my child, that was where I was like, oh, my God, what is this thing? Not feeling confident about myself again. And then can you believe that after this process where I thought it would get bigger, it has actually become smaller postpartum. And so now I'm dealing with small breasts that are not perky. And so on my own confidence journey, every time I take off my clothes and I look at them, I have to do my whole thought process of why I still need to love my breasts and the purpose that they serve and how they're good to me and they're unique. Because even in being bold, even in being my broad tail confidence self, I am still having issues with parts of my body that I, because of what I was looking at when I was younger, I thought it needed to look like that. Also, let's talk about the belly. Now, even women who are not full figured, we go through things where we feel like if we put on weight or if our belly has stretch marks or if stretch marks are anywhere, that we don't feel as confident about it because we were fed this notion for years from we born till now that you, as a woman, you need to look a certain way. Your belly not have no stretch mark. Now your bottom not anywhere in life. Your belly must flat. Your hips must wide. Your breasts must perky. Your legs must nice and long. You must be bow legs. You must be not knee. All these things that they have fed through to us through images on TV, in magazines, or things that they tell us or women that they revere because their bodies look a certain way. So I don't have much problems with my belly because I figure more or less that whenever I want to lose weight, I get in the gym, I start eating healthy and I lose weight. So I'm okay with my size. But then after the baby, first after the fibroids operation, because remember I told you that after I did that operation, my belly went down because it was an enlarged like a, a six month pregnancy. There was this hanging that happened that wasn't there before. And my mother tell me, say, me must wear gurgle if you keep it nice and tight. So, being in at the gurgle them, me and the gurgle them, my friend, everything smooth under your clothes with the gurgle them. And so, got pregnant, as I told you, I had the baby. And this time, ooh, my belly was real big towards the end of the pregnancy. And so this sagging happened again that I was dealing with. And I had to go through in my mind once more to say that my body carried a whole perfect human being who is smart him having 10 fingers and 10 toes he's beautiful why am i beating up on this body that took me through all of that to assist in the creation of this human being and not being thankful for that body that got you to operation and still look good why am I thinking about this sagging? And then for the last two months, something very interesting happened. For every time that I take off my clothes and I'm looking in the mirror and, you know, I'm doing my little poses and talking to myself and loving up my body. For every time me feel like say, me want complain about my belly. My son walks into the room and he does this. And he touches my belly and he laughs and he seems to love it so much. And then I started to laugh and I'd be like, is this the same belly I was looking at and finding false with it? This little boy at 21 months old is touching it and laughing because he thinks it's a good thing. Now, maybe you think it's good because it feels jelly. But for whatever reason, it helped me on my own confidence journey of what I think about my belly. The things that you're feeling as a woman about your body, you're not feeling it alone. And because you feel it, it's okay for you to have these emotions, but it's what you do with the emotions after. When I pitched this project to a number of persons within corporate Jamaica, 
I had to just be so grateful that they saw my vision because I remember when the Flair magazine, they had a feature for International Women's Day in 2018. It was the first time they were doing something like that. And uh, well, it was under the leadership of Tikoya Joseph. Um, I love her so much. And they had a whole spread with a couple of women I was included. And Sajikor actually, on the day that the magazine came out, Sajikor's HR division called me and told me that they loved what I was doing with my brand. They saw it in Flair magazine and they wanted me to come and give a motivational talk to some women in their organization. And so I really respect their brand for doing something like that and for actually coming on board. And then some of my favorite things, like I love Brunswick. I love their new sardine fillets. And when I pitched it to them too, you know, they came on board because they know how a healthy body influences a healthy mind. I see you see my set design and I told you that my best friend did it. And this particular plant right here, my decide say it did after the panda set because my mother gave it to me and she told me two things. One, it's easy for grow so you're not gonna kill it. And two, that is actually known as the money plant. And so it helps with your prosperity, you know? And so it needed to be in a space like this where I wanted to wish all my guests all the success in their various endeavors and even on their own confidence journeys. And, and I'm happy to be able to share my money plant with them because for 2021, being broad tail, broad tail designs, all the people who support me right here is where the money resides. And of course, finally, one of the things that define me and my friends is the fact that we love to take photos so much. If you see me in my clothes, you know me, I go somewhere, me, I go take picture. As a matter of fact, a little secret, before I go to any event, when I put on my clothes, I make sure to do a posing session in my mirror to see my angles in the particular suit that I'm in to take the best pictures so that if photographers are coming, I will have my angles already down pat. So me not feel, me not feel a waste of photographer time. As in, bring up him camera, my dead upon the posing. So how could I ever have a podcast without posing involved? And when I pitched that to Sleek, they definitely jumped on board. And so one of my favorite segments of the podcast is going to be the Sleek Confidence flash, Pose flash segment. In support of my own brand, I decided that every single suit that I'm going to be wearing on this audiovisual podcast is going to be from Brad Tail Designs, from our cover-ups to our maxi dresses, to our flirty short dresses, to our, our jumpers and rompers. So you're going to see a whole set of new things from Brad Tail Designs that we'll definitely have on our page at Official Brad Tail on Instagram and Brad Tail Fit Kinis on Facebook. And as fabulous as I look in all my broad tail pieces, I still needed to accentuate with the fabulosity of Rev Jewelry. And Ticia is also going to be a guest on my show. I want to big up all my Rev family, but I also want to big up my Morgan's Creek family, who, let me tell you something, Joni has the best oils and soaps and candles and body washes and body splashes in life. You need to definitely check her out in Sovereign in Ligani. And she's completely on board. She has fabulous gifts for my guests. And you never know, during this series of Being Broad Tail, you may be able to win a couple of gifts from Morgan's Creek. And in so doing, you may also be getting some giveaways from my favorite spa, the Leoni Spa. It is in Ochi and it is a female spa. It's for your Yanni and everywhere else on the female body. You're going to absolutely love it when you go there. But you have to listen to the podcast for the whole series to be able to access these things. And also for my sexy broad tails, we don't do lingerie, but we got you covered. In Alluring Essence Plus, they have the best in lingerie. And if you listen to the podcast for the whole series, you may get the opportunity to wear one of their fabulous lingeries. So the program is definitely about letting every woman, especially full-figured women, feel confident. Confidence is the best gift you can give to yourself. Wear it, own it, and give it to other women. 